morning, uh, as you know, this, this, this year we are focusing on uh, elevation. Uh, we are focusing on elevation throughout the year. Uh, and each month, starting this month of February, we'll have a different theme. Uh, our theme for uh, the month of February uh, is relationships. Uh, so in all of our ministries and the different things, we have different activities, plans uh, throughout the month of February that we hope will elevate uh, relationships. We'll start uh, on Valentine's with a, a singles uh, event. Uh, and then on that Sunday, uh, our married couples are, are going bowling, I believe, uh, through our family life ministry. Uh, and so this morning, I want to begin a series uh, that I'll, I will preach throughout the month of February, except uh, Black History Sunday. Uh, Black History Sunday will be the third. Officially, we'll celebrate the third Sunday of the month. We'll have our Black uh, History uh, program. Uh, and so we encourage you uh, uh, to be a part of that. But throughout the month, we'll be talking about uh, relationships. And so this morning, uh, I want to begin this series uh, talking about elevating relationships through communication. Elevating relationships through communication. Elevating relationships through communication. And so our text this morning, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, starting at the 25th verse, says, Therefore, put away lying. Let each of one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working his hands, what is good that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Elevating relationships through communication. Uh, the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, God created us to be relational with one another. From the very beginning, you remember uh, when God created Adam and said, Adam, it is not good that man should be alone. And from his rib, uh, he created Eve and, and they began a relationship with one another. Throughout the Bible, we see that God created us to be in relationship with each other. Even when you consider salvation, God gave us Jesus, sent Jesus, who died on Calvary, who is available to all, but to receive him, you must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Why? Because God created us to be relational. There are many different types of relationships that we have in our lives that we are involved in on an everyday basis. Our, if you're married, your marriage relationship. If you're dating, your dating relationship. Your friendships on your job, in your neighborhood, with your family, in organizations that you're in. On and on and on. But this is what I have learned. No matter what type of relationship it is, if there is no communication or if there is bad communication, the relationship will not work. 
Communication is an important, it is one of the major factors in many relationships falling apart. But by, <coughs> by definition, communication is the transfer of information from one place to another. In relationships, communication allows you to explain to someone else what you are experiencing and what your needs are. The act of communicating not only helps to meet your needs, but it also helps you to connect in your relationship. Communication helps you connect to one another. Another reason why communication is important is that oftentimes misunderstandings happen, occur between people. Each person may perceive situations differently, which can create resentment and hurt feelings. And it's all because either no communication or miscommunication. And so it's important in our relationships, if they are going to be successful, to make sure that we have communication. And now the book of Ephesians is interesting because it's split up into two parts. First three chapters of the book of Ephesians deal with the belief of the believer. If you read the first three chapters, you will see that Paul is trying to make the church at Ephesus understand what it is that they believe as Christians. But in the fourth chapter, he pivots. He pivots from the belief of the believer to the behavior of the believer. And what he's saying is, if you believe what I have laid out for you in the first three chapters, well, you ought to behave like it. And he's saying, this is how you ought to behave. And a part of what Paul says, a part of our behavior, here is how we communicate with each other as believers. It's interesting, he does something. You Bible readers will know that in the fifth and the sixth chapter, he actually describes different relationships. He talks about husbands and wives. He talks about parents and children. He talks about employee and employer. That's all in chapter 5 and 6. But notice, before he gets to 5 and 6, in chapter 4, he deals with communication. Somebody missed it. In, in chapters 5 and 6, he lays out the different types of relationships. But in chapter 4, he says, before I can even tell you about husband and wife, parents and children, employee, employer, he said, the first thing I need to lay out is this is how you communicate with one another. Because if you can't communicate with one another, you will never be successful as husband and wife. If you can't communicate with one another, your relationships will never work. And so this morning, if we're going to elevate our relationships through communications, there are five principles that we must understand. Five principles this morning I want to talk about that are important if we're going to elevate our relationships through communication. Number one, the first principle is, if we're going to elevate our relationships through communication, the first thing is, is you must be honest. Everybody say, be honest. be honest. If you're going to elevate your relationships through communication, the first thing it's going to take is honesty. You got to learn how to be honest with one another. Look at that 25th verse. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Another version says, don't lie. Put away lying. <laughs> I don't care what type of relationship it is. If it's going to be successful, it's got 
to be grounded in truth and honesty. And if it's grounded in lies and dishonesty, it's going to fail. You wonder how come you can't get a promotion on your job and you done killed your grandmother all five times. You don't even realize all the lies you done told. That you done already started getting, getting your mindset. Well, that Super, party, Super Bowl party gonna go kind of long tonight. <laughs> what lie I'm gonna call in and tell tomorrow? <laughs> and then you wonder how come they won't give you any projects. You wonder how come you can't get a promotion. No relationship <coughs> will be successful if it's based on dishonesty. Be, be honest. Uh, honesty is probably the most important thing for a relationship to survive and thrive. It is the foundation for everything else and it is critical in all areas of the relationship. Relationship, hear, hear this. Relationships hinge on truth and trust. Relationships hinge on truth and trust. Think about this. Think about this. Think about how Jesus described himself and how he described Satan. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth. That's how Jesus described himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John uh, 8.31, he says to the Jews who have believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. 32nd verse, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's Jesus describing himself as the truth. Satan, on the other hand, is described as the enemy of our souls, as a liar, the one in whom there is no truth. John 8, 44, remember, John 8, 31, 32, he describes himself as truth. Later on in that chapter, in the chapter of John, here is what he says about Satan. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Jesus' truth, Satan liar. And so when our relationship is filled with dishonesty and lies, we are allowing Satan to come in to the relationship. Y'all missed that. Look at the description. Jesus' truth. Satan, the father of lies. And so when our relationship is filled with dishonesty and lies, we are literally letting Satan in to our relationship. And it will never be successful. And what's amazing, as in spite of Paul's exhortation, the truth is, is remember, he's talking to Christians, believers. The church is filled with people who are hurt and offended by dishonesty by church folk. Now, most people will just grin it and bear it, but the truth is, is there are hurt. And see, when you don't deal with it, it festers. When you don't deal with it, it sits. 
I, I, I heard this illustration that was powerful to me. Uh, there was a professor at Vanderbilt University, a math professor, every year uh, as he was passing out uh, his final examination, uh, he would say, today I'm giving you two tests, one in trigonometry and the other in honesty. He said, I want you to pass both, but if you must fail one, fail trigonometry. He said, because there are a whole lot of good people in the world who can't pass trig. But there are no good people in the world who can't pass the examination of honesty. Somebody missed it. He passed them out the test, said, listen, I'm giving you a test of trig, a test of honesty. He said, if you're going to fail one, fail the trig test. Because listen, there are good people who can't pass the trig test. But there are no good people who can't pass the honesty test. He would pass out the test, pack up his stuff, and leave. See, sometimes in life, you got to make a choice. If I want this thing to work, can we be honest? Sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes the truth hurts. But if you want to be successful in your relationship, it's a journey. It ain't easy. You're going to have some bumps in the road. But I wish I had somebody. Uh, and and I, the, the, the Sunday school lesson talked about this morning. We, we talked about uh, being on a journey. And the journey is not always easy. But if you stay there and you hang on in there, there is a joy in getting to the other side. I wish I had somebody here. Anybody here who's been married for any length of time knows it ain't always easy. Sometimes it's rougher. But if you would be honest with one another. If you elevate relationships through communication, number one, you got to be honest. Number two, number two, not only do you have to be honest, but you got to be current. Be, be current. Be, be current. 26 verse says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Can we be honest? Sometimes you got a right to be mad. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes we do stuff. People do stuff. And I'm just saying what the text says. Hey, listen, be, be mad. Be angry about it. But there's a caveat to it. Be angry, but sin not. Be angry, but don't let the sun go down. See, <coughs> so often what someone is mad about ain't actually what they're mad about. Now you brothers will be able to help me. Y'all know all of a sudden her voice changes and you're wondering what in the world? Where did that come from? I mean, cause it, I mean the littlest thing and all of a sudden, she done went from zero to a hundred. <laughs> and you're looking like, Lord, what in the world did I do? Oftentimes, what she's mad about ain't really what she's mad about. What she's really mad about happened two or three months ago. I wish I had a witness here. Oh, uh, you sister, don't get quiet on me now. For all parties, 
it's best when something happens, deal with it. It may be difficult, it may be hard, but if your relationship is going to work, you've got to make up in your mind, we've got to deal with this. I, I like what the Message Bible says. The Message Bible says, go ahead and be angry. You do well to get angry sometimes. He said, but the, it says this, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. You see, this is the thing. Satan, he don't need but a sliver of space. He don't need but a small open window to come on in. And when he comes in, his goal is to destroy. It's to destroy your relationship. It's to cause destruction in your life. And so he, he says, listen, you got to be, he's, what he's saying is be current. Be what? Deal with your issues in the current moment. Uh, he said, don't let, don't sleep on it. Don't let the sun go down. But you all sit right there and talk about it and hash it out and get it over with. Yeah. And don't allow Satan. I know the easy route is, oh, we just ain't going to talk about it. You allow Satan to come in. The easy route is we just gonna let it go. But you let Satan to come in. He, he says, be honest, be current. Third principle, he says, if you're going to elevate your relationships through communication, not only do you have to be honest, not only do you have to be current, but he said, you gotta be respectful. Be, be respectful. Look at the 29th verse. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Watch what you say. I'm going to say it again. Watch. What you say, because I, I told the 8 o'clock crowd, it's amazing that no matter how many times you apologize, no matter how many times you say I'm sorry, once it comes out of your mouth into the atmosphere, it's out. You, you can't take words back. You can beg and plead and say, oh, I, 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 I really didn't mean that. But you said it. Yeah. And, and we've got to learn to be respect. I saw this, I saw this, and this, 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 I mean, just blew me out the water. Here it is. Never trust your tongue when your heart is bitter. Never trust your tongue when your heart is bigger, bitter, and this is the B part of it, hush until you heal. Listen, I should have got more amens right there. Never trust your tongue when your heart is bitter because when your heart is bitter, when you are hurting, when you are broken, when you are dealing with something, you will say anything. I know you walk around talking about you saved, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, uh, you know, fire baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, let somebody hurt your heart. Yes. 
Sometimes you've got to hush even on the job. Sometimes you just got, I know what you're feeling on the inside. But sometimes you just got to be quiet. Go outside, take you a walk around. Amen. Because you do know that mortgage got to be paid. You do know them lights got to be paid. You do know you got a child in school. And listen, what was done to you, what was said about you, may it was wrong. You have a right to be angry. But listen, if you are going, remember Jesus even talked about, I mean, Paul talked about in, in, in Ephesians 6, he talked about that worker and employer. But listen, you got to communicate. Sometimes the best thing to do is just be quiet. Matthew 12 and 34 says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. This is the thing. This is why, this is why you got to hush until you heal. Because when somebody has hurt you, you will dig down into the deeps of your soul. And you will find that very thing. See, see, see. And this is what I learned. This is amazing to me. The people with the sharpest tongue often have the softest feelings. They feelings get hurt the easiest. I wish I had somebody here. They'll say what they want to say to somebody else, but the moment, anytime somebody says, oh, Jesus, you know. <laughs> But listen, no matter how, how we walk around talking about we're this and we're that, all of us have feelings. And folk can say stuff that will hurt us to our core. And, and whether you are the, whichever person you are, you, you need to watch out and, and make up in your mind that you know what? I, we've got to learn how to be respectful of one another. Even in church, how we talk to one another. On our jobs, how we talk to one another. Even, and I tell folks, even with your children, listen, we know you the adult. We know that child is you ain't got the dis. I, I'll never forget. I, I was in the store one day, and uh, there was a woman. And and I'll never forget. She was talking to this little child, and, and all he and doing what little kids do when they go to the store. A, a aisle full of candy. They gonna grab something and say, "I want." That's natural. That woman read that child, and yes, he's a child, but you can at least respect him. And I heard her say, I heard that woman say stuff to that child. You ought not say to another grown person. She was going, and I thought, I thought if that's the way she talks to him now, what you think is going to happen when he gets older? Oh, that's the way communication, that's why I tell her husbands and wives, see your children, see everything you do. Husbands, if you, if you think communicating with your wife is cussing her out and calling her out of her name, you got a son that's coming behind you. You got a daughter that's gonna be with somebody else one day. They, I, 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 I tell folk before, I'll never forget what, you know, you really have to watch what you say when you have little children. I, I was, I, you know, when, when Kendall was little, when she first started walking, everywhere I went, she was right behind me. I mean, sometimes I would trip into her because she was just on my heel everywhere I went. 
And I oh, and, and 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 Lord, I don't know when that girl stopped sleeping in the bed with us. <laughs> but one night I got out of the bed to go get some water or something, and I didn't even know she had got on the bed, got out the bed and was right behind me. And I stubbed my toe. Now you super saved folk, I know stuff don't ever come out y'all's mouth, amen. <laughs> y'all pray for me. Uh, I stubbed my toe and, 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 and I began to speak in unknown tongues. <laughs> and I didn't even realize what I had said until my my precious, beautiful, cute little baby said what I had just said. And when I heard it come out of her mouth, I said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> we got to be respectful. Your children are Other folk are watching you. you. You're supposed to be the Christian on your job. You're supposed to be the example on your job. Be respectful. Number four, number four. And I'm, I'm, number four. Principles, if we're going to elevate our relationships through communication. We've got to be honest. We've got to be current. We've got to be respectful. Number four, he says, if you're going to elevate your relationship through communication, you've got to be spiritual. You got to be spiritual. Look at the 30th verse. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of re redemption. Get rid of <coughs> all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with any kind of malice. He said, instead, be kind and compassionate to one another. You can't be spiritual and be filled with bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, and malice. That's why Paul encourages time and time again to walk in the spirit, to talk in the spirit, to live in the spirit. Because if you're going to call yourself a Christian, you've got to act like a Christian. It don't matter. At the church, they call you reverend, deacon, choir member, usher. I don't want to leave nobody out. <laughs> and the moment you get home, it's like you become a different person. He says, no, even in your relationships, you've got to be spiritual. You can't walk around being filled with all of this bitterness and rage and anger and brawling and all this other stuff. And in too many relationships, people are filled with all of that. And what happens is they come in, and, and let me just, let me just, let me take this commercial break and put a plug in for therapy. Amen, I said it. <laughs> therapy, yes. Going to see somebody. Because I tell folks all the time who come to me, it's so far I can take you. I can take you, I can tell you what the Bible says. I can take you spiritually, but there is a point where you need professional help. I wish I had somebody here. See, gone is the day where pastors thought that, you know, pastors thought that they could just do anything and they, they were ever, no, uh-uh, it's some stuff I ain't qualified to handle. I wish I had somebody here. And you need to go see somebody and talk to somebody about all that stuff you got going on on the inside of you. 
And what happens is, a lot of times, we come, see, the reason that you all can't communicate with one another is because the person you are in relationship with came into the relationship with a whole lot of baggage. They came in with bitterness. They came in with anger. They came in with malice because of something that happened in their childhood, something that happened when they're growing up. And listen, you, but I tell folk all the time, before you, try, gotta, before you try to go get yourself connected to somebody else uh, you need to fix you first because what happens a lot of time is we bring that stuff into relationships and from day one oh oh it's good as long as everything is okay but the moment you hit a little rough patch all of that anger and bitterness and rage comes out. And the other person is looking like, what I do? And all the times it ain't you. It's stuff that they've had inside of them that they never dealt with. And Paul is saying, you got to be spiritual. And until you get rid of all of that, you will never, ever be the Christian that God has called you to be. I, I've told this story before. I, I was, as a young man, I was filled because of what I felt like my father wasn't growing up. I was filled with so much bitterness and rage and anger. My father drove me one time from Houston to Atlanta. And that's about a 12 hour trip. And I think that entire trip, I may have said three words. My father asked me, he said, can you drive? I said, yeah. You wanna stop? Yeah. And when we got to the campus of Morehouse College, he said, is that your dorm? I said, yeah. Got out the car, got my bags, didn't say thank you, didn't say anything because I was filled with bitterness, rage, and anger. My second, uh, second anniversary at my first church, New Sunlight Baptist Church in Lake Charles, uh, Kendall had been born and we were going to have my anniversary and we were going to bless her. My family came from all over the country. My father drove all the way up from Atlanta to Lake Charles uh, to be a part of that. I recognize everybody in that church but my father. My mother, who was there, uh, had gone back to Houston with uh, my home church who came to celebrate with us. And that Monday morning, she called me. She said, I need to talk to you about something. She said, listen, I'm going to be frank with you. You will never, ever, ever be the man, the father, the pastor, the husband that God wants you to be until you let it go. She said, you need to let go of that bitterness. She said you need to let go of that anger. She said you need to let go of that rage because everybody in that church knew your father was there and saw you not recognize him. She said, and the truth be told, I'm the one that ought to be mad. You ain't miss out on a whole lot. I mean, you have him, but you, have, you know, I provide, I still was able by the grace of God. She said, but if you ever want to be who God wants you to be, you need to let that go. I got off the phone with my mother, and I called my father. And for the first time in my life, I had a real conversation with him. I apologized for my actions the day before. And we had a real conversation. And I can say that very day, literally, as I was on the phone with him and tears were coming down my eyes, I could feel all that stuff coming out of me. And to this day, I, he still can frustrate me at times. 
but I love him. If he needs anything, he knows he can call me. Listen, brothers and sisters, he says, you got to be spiritual. That's why even in Galatians, when it talks about the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit, it says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. If you're going to be spiritual, you can't be filled with that bitterness, rage, anger. you you got to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit, and it will come out in your relationship. Elevating relationships through communication. Got to be honest. Got to be current. Got to be respectful. Got to be spiritual. But this is the last thing. You got to be forgiving. You got to be forgiving. You got to learn the principle of forgiveness. And I like what Paul says in the B part of that 32nd verse. He says, forgiving each other just as in Christ, God forgave you. See, can we be honest? Forgiveness ain't easy. Oh, I know we like to walk around acting like, you know, we are these super spiritual saints. But the truth is, is forgiveness is not easy. In fact, I believe that's why he said, before he talked about forgiveness, he said you got to be spiritual. Because, listen to me. You will never forgive in the natural. I need to say that again. You will never for it is it's not natural for us to forgive in the natural man. That ain't the way we're built. That ain't the way we were created. We are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You will never forgive somebody in the natural man. That's why he said, before you can forgive, you got to be spiritual. But in the spiritual man, and that's why he, he put it, he, he said, listen, when it gets hard for you, in your community, see, see, sometimes in our relationships, as we're in relationship. There's, there's oftentimes this barrier that is there that was put up, and maybe somebody put it up by an action that they did, a lie that they told. But there is a barrier there that is stopping the communication in the relationship. And you got to make up, I said, you got, sometimes you got to make up, do I want this to work? That's a choice. Do I want this? Now, listen, if you don't want it to work, now, now, if you don't want it to work, be honest. Go back to point one. Be honest and say so. Say, listen, we have exhausted all of our options. We done prayed. We done done everything. That I can't, I can't do it. Well, okay, well, then that person will have to make a choice. But if you want the relationship to be successful, you have to make a choice. Even though that barrier is there. I'm going to forgive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it out the way because I want this to work. And when it gets hard, Paul, see, Paul ain't, Paul knows y'all. Paul, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know what she said to me. You don't know how he treated me. When it gets hard, this is what Paul says. Forgiving each other. He didn't say, for. it doesn't say forgiving each other, period. It says forgiving each other, comma, just as Christ forgave you. When forgiveness gets hard, you just think about while you were yet in sin, Christ died. When you were at your lowest moment, you were no good. You were messed up. You had made mistakes. And yet, in spite of that, Jesus Christ died out on Calvary's cross so that you could have a right to the tree of life. Listen, we got, we got to learn if our relationships are going to be elevated 
in our communication, we got to learn to be forgiving. I'm done when I tell you this. We all know that this entire country, really the world, is mourning the loss of Kobe Bryant and his daughter and seven others uh, who passed uh, early in the week, crash in California, continue to be in prayer for his wife and his three other daughters and others who are grieving. But somebody asked me a question. They said, uh, are Kobe's parents dead? Hadn't heard anything from them. He's relatively young. Where are his parents? I, I said Kobe actually was very close to his parents at one point. If you see when he first won titles in LA, you see pictures of Kobe and his mother and father celebrating the title together. But he met Vanessa at a young age. He was 21, she was 18, and they decided to get married. His parents, specifically his mother, were against it. She thought they were too young to get married. And they had that first falling out. A couple years later, they tried to reconcile. Uh, and they had a little bit, but another incident happened where they tried to sell some of his memorabilia. And they ended up having to go to court. And, uh, and, and the relationship was broken. Now listen, we, we don't know. Uh, I know he had reconciled with his two sisters. But imagine what his parents must be feeling right now. Because, see, we've all been there. Kobe's young. He's only 41 years old. We got plenty of time to reconcile. One of these old days, maybe when one of the girls graduates, maybe when one of the girls gets ready to get married, we're going to have a chance. Uh, maybe as time passes, we'll forget what we were angry about. We'll forget all of the stuff in our past. Because, you know, we got plenty of time. Imagine what that mother and father must be feeling today. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, so you see, the thing is, is we don't know how much time we got. You don't know how much time you got. If, if you've got a relationship in your life and the truth is uh, it's been, I mean, it's been messed up. The communication has been cut off. You need to pray about that thing. Because nobody, nobody wants to be at a funeral asking themselves, what if? What could have been? I should have done. I wish I could take it back. He says, listen, if you're going to elevate your relationships, be honest, be current. Be respectful, be spiritual, but he said, make sure that you be forgiving. We pray that you've been blessed by today's message. Please join us again next week for another powerful word from God. For prayer requests or to order a copy of today's program, write to us at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia. 20171. That's Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. You can also visit us on the web at www.mountpleasantbaptist.org. Until we meet again, remember, God's world, our mission field.